Welcome everyone. My name is Josh and I will be your moderator tonight. I'm excited to welcome Patrick McGibbon as our speaker. For nearly 25 years, Patrick has been helping dentists find the right digital solutions for their practices. With the progression of technology, Patrick now meets with dentists in a virtual setting to promote intraoral scanning, CAD CAM, CBCT, and 3D printing. Before we get started, I would like to mention that CE is not available for tonight's webinar. Patrick, welcome and thank you for being with us. I will pass it over to you now. Great, thank you. Hello, my name is uh, Patrick McGibbon and I appreciate you participating in this webinar series. The topic of implementing CDCT to its fullest potential is something that I'm very passionate about. Now, I would never encourage anyone to upgrade their cone beam machine just for a few bells and whistles. However, there are some very significant reasons why a dentist may choose to get a new CBCT. Well, during the course of this webinar, I hope to bring some of those reasons to your attention. Now, traditionally, when we have talked about upgrading to 3D, the conversation has mostly been focused on clinicians who have a 2D pan and are exploring 3D for the first time. We're at the point now, however, where the vast majority of dentists have already invested in 3D. As a matter of fact, as many as 65% of dental offices in the U.S. already have a cone beam machine in their office. Some have been using 3D x-ray for nearly two decades. Now, of course, there are a few folks who might still be trapped in the 2D world. Some may make the jump to 3D at some point, some may never. However, the focus of this presentation is for the clinician who has already invested in, in CBCT at least once, and now perhaps many years later is wondering if now might be the time to consider an upgrade in technology. Implementing 3D imaging in your practice says a lot about you as a dentist. It says that you care about your patients. You want what's best for them. The fact that you have a cone beam means that you have a high standard of care. Back when you, when you bought the cone beam, it was, and probably still is, a wise investment. I would encourage you to take time once again to consider the current and future needs of your practice. There may be an opportunity to do even more. As the needs of your practice increase, and they surely will, you will need to think about reinvesting in 3D imaging. There are plenty of reasons to consider an upgrade. It's often been said that you can't treat what you can't see. Have you ever stopped to think about how much treatable dentistry walks in your front door and then walks right back out with no treatment plan or gets referred to a specialist? When it comes down to it, there are really only two ways to be more profitable in dentistry. You can either work longer hours seeing more patients, which very few dentists want to do, or you can start offering procedures that you weren't doing yesterday. Perhaps those procedures are more, aren't, aren't so heavily influenced by insurance reimbursements. You are likely already doing single site posterior implants. Is it possible that you may be able to see more treatable dentistry if you had a new CBCT? Would it allow you to do more sophisticated endo, zygomatic implants, as well as other prosthetic or airway and sleep treating uh, TMD or orthodontics? In order to adequately treat these conditions, you must be able to see the affected anatomy. Your small field of view CBCT machine that you love and adore may still be adequate for single side implants, but it's likely insufficient for the other modalities beyond the upper and lower arches. You may need a larger field of view. The dentistry that you are able to offer may be limited to the field of view of your cone beam. You may have a hard time seeing adult third molars on an 8 by 8 centimeter field of view. You'll never see the condyle on a machine that was designed to capture a quadrant for implants or endo. And you certainly can't do it on an air, do airway analysis on an 8 by 8 machine. In fact, most programs for treating sleep apnea would prefer a field of view in the 20 by 17 centimeter range. As a clinician and a business owner, you're always looking for the opportunity to grow. So let me ask you this. Have you ever asked your assistant to take half of a panoramic? Probably not. Why? Well, the answer is obvious. You want to see what else is going on on the other side of the patient's dentition. So why would you want to be limited to a small field of view cone beam? 
in all fairness, if you buy your cone beam 10 years ago, there's really no reason that you should regret that purchase. The chances are the eight by eight field of view machine that you have was the state of art, the state of the art when you bought it. In the same way that this kid's clothes probably fit really well when he first wore them. Likewise, your cone beam was probably one of the best investments you've ever made in your practice and is likely paid for itself many times over. That being said, just like the boys' clothes, it may be time to consider a larger option. A common concern I hear from dentists who are considering a larger field of view is, but I don't want to be responsible for the pathology I may or may not find in the large field of view. It is true that every image that you take, you are responsible for reading. However, the good news is that you will be trained in the methodical process of looking for and identifying asymmetry and the other potential abnormalities. If you find something that's out of the norm, rest assured you don't have to know exactly what it is. You just have to know that it's not supposed to be there. You will often find abnormalities in 3D volumes. Sometimes some of these findings may be obvious. Others may be out of the realm of your expertise. The DICOM file that you have in your cone beam software can easily be transmitted to a dental radiologist to read the image. The radiologist will then give you a detailed report of the pathology that is found. The reading and the report is generally less than $100 and should always be the patient's responsibility to pay. Keep in mind that just because the new machine that you are considering is capable of a larger field of view, doesn't mean that you're obligated or even encouraged to use the large setting every time. If, you were, if you're preparing for an endodontic treatment, there's no reason to have a 3D image of the, of the patient's entire head. The Alera principle applies to fields of view just as much as it does to KV, MA, exposure time, the use of the appropriate field of view that is clinically relevant for the case. The most popular fields of view, even among owners, of the large field of view machines is still in the 10 to 11 field of view or 11 centimeter field of view range. Now, it seems that everyone lately is talking about airway as it pertains to snoring and sleep apnea. This may not be news to you, but dentists of course cannot diagnose sleep apnea. It's important to know that there are plenty of other webinars on YouTube that, that will do a great job and go into great depths of discussing the prevalence and comorbidities of, of obstructive sleep apnea. And you can these are available to anyone with access to Google, so I'll not belabor the, the statistics. But when we're talking about airway, it's not just di the diagnosis of OSA that needs to be treated. According to this study from 2020, an estimated 73 million men 52 million men, women and 20 million, million children are affected by snoring. I'm sure you're aware that it's a problem, but you may be asking, why are snoring and sleep disorders relevant to a cone beam conversation? Why am I even talking about this? Well, the reason is a dentist can use a large field of view CBCT to screen for possible constricted airway. What you are seeing in this 3D volume is the best case scenario for this patient's airway. If while the patient is standing, the airway is this constricted, what will it look like when the patient is lying down? Not to mention after they've had a few glasses of wine. There are plenty of sleep companies, companies that a dentist can work with that will partner with you to help you refer patients to a physician for a sleep study. Then if the patient gets a diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea, the dentist can provide an oral appliance to treat the sleep disorder. Now, don't feel like you would be reinventing the wheel with this new workflow. Many of the sleep companies have a turnkey solution that not only helps with the referrals to their physician, but also provide a service for medical billing. And that's an important part of this. The vast majority of these companies recommend a vertical volume size that is capable of capturing from the nasion down to the hyoid, which is typically in the 17 centimeter vertical dimension range. Once again, you're not going to be able to capture this with an 8x8. Even with a 10x20 volume, you would still only capture the trachea. And when screening for airway constrictions, it's ideal to also capture the sinus. Sometimes the trachea is not the only bottleneck. 
Another opportunity that upgraded an upgraded CBCT will offer you is stress-free endodontics. Have you ever stopped to think about how much production you refer out to an endodontist on an annual basis? Is it possible that you could have easily done a few of those cases? By the same token, have you ever uh, bitten off a more, little more than you cared to chew and been surprised by an unexpected MB2? Have you ever discovered a root fracture that didn't show up in the periapical? Well, of course, it happens all the time. Plain and simple, there are there is a profitable opportunity for general dentists who are willing to do more root canals. Most general dentists don't like to do them because they're, there's too many unknowns. But if you take a high-resolution 3D volume, it may change the situation. It may change what you see. It could change your perspective and your willingness to treat the case. Rather than referring the patient to some specialist across town that the patient doesn't know or trust, why not keep the easy to moderate endo cases in-house? If it's a layup, why not take the shot? How many more root canals would you be willing to do if you could easily see the bifurcation, the fractured root tip, the lateral canal, or the MB2? If you're interested in growing the endodontic segment of your practice, you must have the ability to see what an endodontist sees. Practically speaking, you'll be held to the same standard that an endodontist would be. So effectively treating more endo patients in your practice may be as simple as upgrading to a higher resolution cone beam. Now, a voxel, as you know, is a three-dimensional pixel. It may be a little oversimplifying to say this, but the smaller the voxel, the higher the resolution. The standard voxel size of 0.4 millimeters down to 0.2 millimeters typically may not be sufficient to properly see the canals and root fractures. Voxel sizes of 0.075 down to 0.05 are available now and are considered the standard of care for endodontics. All of this talk about higher resolution, we need to keep in mind that there is no such thing as safe x-ray. Increasing the resolution inevitably increases the patient dosage. The good news is that the higher resolution volumes with, your, with your, their incredibly small voxel size are only available on the smallest fields of view. So don't worry about your team accidentally capturing a high resolution image of the patient's full head. Rest assured that that's not possible. Let me say that again. The high resolution volumes with the incredibly small voxel size are only available in the smallest fields of view. And that's a safety measure. Using the Alera principle, we should always be trying to minimize the dosage to the patient while still capturing the anatomy in such a way that diagnosis is not compromised. So while we're on the topic of x-ray dosage, let's talk about the qualitative effect of lowering the dosage. These two images that you see on the screen were taken the same, on the same patient the same day with the same cone beam machine. The image on the left was in normal or standard resolution, which was the equivalent of roughly 86 microsieverts of radiation. The image on the right was taken with the same voxel size of 200 microns, but the exposure was dialed down to just 20 microsieverts, 86 on the left, 20 on the right. If you look closely, sure, you can tell that there's a difference, perhaps in the sharpness of the trabecular pattern, but that's a 77% reduction in dosage with no statistical reduction in, diagnostic, in the diagnostic quality of the radiograph. Well, that's absolutely amazing when you think about it. This particular CBCT was taken on a Planmeca Promax 3D mid. Now, I mentioned Planmeca Promax 3D mid by name since it was the specific focus of this research study that was done by Dr. J.B. Ludlow at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. In this study, it analyzed the effects that re the reduction of dosage would have on the resultant image. The study makes it a point to remind the reader of the importance of the Alera principle. Then concludes that while this dose reduction was significant, no statistical reduction in image quality between the ultra-low dose and the standard protocol was seen. If, in fact, the reasonably acceptable dosage is now up to 77% lower due to technological advancements, well, think about it. There must also be an implied responsibility to at least consider upgrading your CBCT machine. Okay, 
So one thing that will surely destroy image quality is patient movement. This kid here, this is Brett, AKA the kazoo kid. Now I'm not suggesting that you need to take very many X 3d volumes on an eight year old kid, but who would want to position Brett in the CBCT machine? Well, to be fair, there are plenty of adults that are nervous and squirm when it's time for x-rays. Who wants to make sure that the patient doesn't wiggle and try to ask like 34 questions before the overhead makes it even halfway around? If you ask any of your assistants, they'll tell you the struggle is real. And what happens when the patient can't hold still? Well, if you've used CBCT, CBCT long enough, you've probably seen images like those on the screen. The ghosting double images of the radiograph on the left or the ripple with the striation lines of the image on the right. This type of artifact is, is in fact very common. It's the result of the patient fidgeting or talking, flinching, or simply swallowing. Quite often it requires a retake of the image. Well, it goes without saying, but the patient that has to get a retake just received double the prescribed x-ray dosage. They had to get exposed twice. Now it's not your fault that the patient moved, but what if there was something that you could do to mitigate or correct the movement? One way to reduce patient movement is to have the patient seated while also implementing temple supports, handlebars, and, uh, and a bite stick. Some of this you may already be doing, pretty common. Perhaps a better way to stabilize the patient is to offer a seated position with lumbar support, a chin cup, and occipital support. A patient is much more comfortable when they have something supportive to lean back against. Another advantage of the newer machine is a shorter scan time. With the quick scan low dose setting, the iCAT can capture a 3D volume in as little as 4.8 seconds. The quicker you can capture the image, the less time the patient is required to hold still. The artifact in this volume were caused by something as simple as the patient swallowing during the exposure. Notice the tongue movement in the image on the right. The artifacts in the resultant image are likely something you encounter on a regular basis. Planmeca Calm utilizes software algorithms to correct the patient movement. This eliminates most retakes. It eliminates exposing the patient to a second do dosage of x-ray and it saves time for the clinical team. The technological advancements in CBCT have dramatically improved the way the patient is positioned. What if your team didn't have to worry about laser lights? What if they could, pay, uh, what if they could see the patient on the user interface and simply select the anatomy that, th that needs to be imaged? Imagine the reduction of x-ray dosage by not exposing the areas that are out of the scope of clinical interest. Imagine the reduction of retakes that happen as a result of missing the anatomy. Well, this isn't futuristic of something that is a prototype. It's available now in the Plan Mecca Viso. For top-down virtual implant planning, you still need to marry the STL file from the di uh, uh, sorry the STL file with the DICOM file. But the two data sets are quite often in different software programs. This is a very common scenario. Dr. Randallet wants to virtually place an implant in his 3D x-ray software and later design a surgical guide. He needs to use ST the STL file from his scanner and the DICOM file from his CBCT. The intro scan and the CBCT volume are different, or they're in different softwares. They are different brands. So what does he do? As George Costanza would say, he's an importer exporter because he's constantly going, he's constantly exporting from one software and importing into another. The advantages of upgrading your CBCT are not limited only to hardware. With the Dexas DTX Studio software, you can integrate existing intraoral scanning technologies such as Medit or Trios into your 3D workflow. While virtually placing implants, imagine not having to export and import intraoral scans. What if you could automatically have your bite wing, intraoral photos, panoramics, 
periapicals, patient photos, CBCT and intraoral scans, all in the same software without exporting and importing. That's not to say that importing and exporting is wrong. It's just that there's an easier way to accomplish this workflow. The Dexis DTX Studio Clinic software allows you to have one patient record for all of your dental imaging. A challenge with dental imaging has always been getting the patient to personally relate to their radiographs. Let's face it, the patients aren't used to looking at their bite wings, their periapicals, their panos, or 3D image slices of their teeth. They wonder, what am I looking at? Is, is it the left? Is this the right, the upper, the lower? What is this? Who is this? Uh, the idea of showing the patient their radiographs becomes, it goes back to the concept of co-diagnosing with the patient. A patient is much more likely to accept their treatment plan if they understand and take personal accountability of the findings in their radiographs. One of the best ways to accomplish this is to overlay the photographic rendering of the patient's face on top of the 3D x-ray volume. The positive impact on the case presentation cannot be overstated. The best way to protect your investment long-term is to take advantage of perhaps trade-in opportunities. There are primarily two different ways to do a trade-in. There are companies that will buy your, your used CBCT. These third, sorry, these 3D, these third-party companies will make you an offer on your used equipment. If you accept the offer, the payment will be made to Henry Shine and applied towards the purchase of the new x-ray machine. The third-party company will then arrange to have their technician, technicians come in and remove your old equipment. Alternatively, VaTech is the only company that currently offers trade-in value for your existing CBCT that you can apply towards the purchase of a new VaTech machine. Both options are legitimate ways to stay current on 3D technology without the hassle of listing your old equipment on a marketplace or arranging for the removal, transportation, or disposal of the old machine. Dense by Serona keeps things very similar. Sorry, keeps very, things very simple and elegant by essentially offering two different machines. The Orthophys S11 is a great choice for dentists who need volume sizes ranging from five by five centimeters all the way up to 11 by 10 centimeters. However, the Axios is appropriately named the practice builder since it offers the 17 by 13 field of view in addition to all the, of the smaller field of view options. It's perfect for the dentist who needs to capture more than just the upper and lower arches. For Seric owners who are interested in 3D printing with the Prime Print, one of these two machines should be strongly considered. If you don't already have a, a 3D printer, chances are you are at least considering the possibility. Many general dentists have found a great return on investment by manufacturing night guards and surgical guides in office at a fraction of the cost from a lab. For example, uh, surgical guides in particular can be as much as $450 or more from a lab. The cost of manufacturing in-house is generally less than $10 if you're doing the design yourself. In early 2022, Densply Serona introduced the Prime Print 3D printer ecosystem. There are a few, uh, there are a few unique features of this printer. The 3D, print, 3D printing has traditionally been a very messy process. With the prime print, the user will never come in contact or even see the, li the liquid resin. So it's a much cleaner workflow. As the post -pro also the post-processing unit that washes and cures the print utilizes nitrogen in order to provide an oxygen-free curing environment. This eliminates the oxygen inhibition layer, which is essentially a layer of sticky uncured resin. The uncured resin, of course, is toxic so it's best to minimize human contact with the uncured resin. Densply Serona believes so much in this workflow that they not only pursued FDA approval for their resins, 
but they had the they have had the FDA approve their entire surgical guide workflow from the Prime Scan to the Axios to the in lab software to the Prime Print. Now, the only reason I mentioned the Prime Print in a cone beam focused webinar is because the Prime Prime Print surgical guide workflow is only possible with a dense by Serona CBCT. If you were a CERIC owner and you were seriously considering the prime print for surgical guides, just know that you will also need a dense fly Serona CBCT, preferably either the Axios or the S11. Chances are you bought your first 3D machine specifically for implants. Well, that's, that's great. Well, there are many reasons to consider up, upgrading to a new and perhaps larger field of view cone beam. You will have the ability to see and treat more dentistry, such as airway screening, TMD, and endo. So many clinicians buy their cone beam for implants and fall in love with it for endo. The advancements in technology have made it have made available things like higher resolution endo, patient movement mitigation with Calm from Plan Mecca, ultra low dose, which reduces the patient dosage by up to seventy seven percent without any statistical reduction in, in, in image quality. Surgical guide workflow with the prime print is, a gr is great for CEREC customers who want to expand their, uh, their dense fly Serona ecosystem. Patient face overlay, which is available through several manufacturers. Graphical user interface patient positioning with the Plan Mecca Viso G3, G5, and G7. All imaging in one software with the DTX Studio from Dexas. Now, to conclude, I want to address a few commonly or frequently asked questions. Uh, first of all, how long is the warranty? I hear this all the time. Well, obviously with this question, it's going to depend on the brand. Speaking generally, most machines offer between five to six years of warranty. Some have a fee, some are included at no charge. My advice is to not make the warranty the number one buying criteria. All of these machines are built to last. It's been my experience that there, if there are problems, you'll generally know within the first year, and that's well within the warranty period, so the manufacturer can take care of it, and there really shouldn't be an issue going forward. Now, if we were talking about a handheld x-ray that's being moved around the office all day long, a good extended warranty would be a wise investment. However, a 3D machine is bolted to the floor and to the wall. Warranty replacement issues, quite frankly, are extremely rare across the board. Another question is, will insurance pay for the 3D image? Uh, the feedback that I've gotten from dentists is that in general, the answer is still no. However, if you are screening for airway and the patient is referred to a physician and receives a diagnosis for sleep apnea, then the 3D image can be reimbursed, but it's done through medical insurance. There again, you would want to work with one of these companies that, uh, that to help you with the referrals to the physician and with the medical billing. So I strongly encourage you that, that you work with one of those companies. Uh, let's see, the next one is, uh, can I diagnose caries with a new CBCT? Well, this is a great question. The answer is still for the most part, no. You'll see gross caries lesions, and, but as far as interproximal decay, you're still best off using an intraoral sensor. Will that change in, this, in the future? Well, I hope so. But for now, don't throw away your sensors quite yet. They still have a place in your practice. So in conclusion, if you have any questions or feedback regarding any of this or, or any of the Henry Schein webinars, we would love to hear from you at webinars at henryshine.com. Uh, we also invite you to check out our other webinars that are available on henryshinedental.com forward slash webinars. Thank you very much, and I, I sincerely appreciate the time that you've taken to watch this webinar. I wish you all the best in treating your patients with the latest in CBCT technology. All right. Thank you, Patrick, for that wonderful presentation this evening. And of course, thank you all of us. Thank you all of you for joining us tonight. And we did record tonight's webinar, and we will be emailing out the recording sometime in the next week. We also appreciate your feedback via our survey that will pop onto your screen after this webinar concludes. And of course, thank you all for joining us and we look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Thanks, Patrick. <music>